Well, 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 what a special treat we have tonight. Spags, you and I reunited for a boozy best ball draft. You were paying off a bit. Uh, I guess last summer, Pete thrived, hitting his subscriber goals for the bet that we had made. And finally, Splash Play pla uh, passed theirs in the back half of 2023. But now it's a new year, Pete, a new big board. And I'm excited to spend some time with you on a Saturday night. And I guess I'll leave it to you to set the rules. I've had two beers already, so I came prepped. Yeah, I think this is my second. So I, I was trying to get a, a little bit of a head start. A head start for me these days, though, is a lot different than it uh, it used to be. So I think the premise for tonight, uh, in a few minutes, we're going to hop in a draft. Um, and, and we've established a drinking game. It, there's not like a bingo card of phrases or things we're going to say. No, before every pick, Spags and I are going to write down on a piece of paper. I got some note cards ready here. Who we think we should take and obviously the game is we we're wanting to be on the same page if we're on the same page great we make the pick we move on if we have different names written down we each have to take a drink so uh, it could get boozy fast if we miss out on the all card the memo i'm just gonna have to say mine <laughs> I guess. Oh, I thought we said, I told you we were writing it down. Yeah, you said that it was like, we had to, we had to decide in advance. I didn't know it was going to be written down. I fucked up that it, part. <laughs> it'll, it'll work because it's just really one of us has to write it down. Right. right? So right. as long as mine is ahead. Uh, I, I, I will you the process. I promise. And I, I said, okay. you know, we came with this concept in part because Pete's being sober right now, which I know you've talked about with Davis Maddock, but what is the decision here? Like you're already, you've already been jacked for years. Like what else do you need to do? It's not even, honestly, the most part of it is I've been trying to get way better sleep. And I mm. like when, when I drink, that's like one of the easiest things uh, that messes up my sleep. So yeah, and I, I've had a few drinks. I actually haven't had beer in a while. You know, I've had a couple glasses of wine, a couple cocktails over the past few months. Uh, but yeah, no, no, uh, no beer lately. So yeah, these are going to, these Modellos are going to hit me hard. Although I will say I missed them. It's, it's tasting pretty good right now. Is that a Modelo Negra? No, Especial. Yeah. Okay. Cause yeah, we got a, a case of them from my father. And I mentioned this on stream the other day, but he had gotten them for his car mechanic. Cause his car mechanic, like loved Modelo Negras. And the guy just like left the job all of a sudden without, I guess my father-in-law knowing. So we ended up with a case of them and I've been like enjoying the Modelo Negras. I feel like they're like a nice, like you have one beer and that's enough of the taste. And then you, you can kind of tap out. Yeah. I, I like Negras. They I'm a little more seasonal with them. I like them in the fall. Um, it's been a, it's getting a little warmer here on the East coast, as you know. So now I'm ready to transition into a special territory, but like a, a mechanic, like Modelo is still the drink of the people. I know it's been like co-opted by UFC and now all these other folks, but uh, Modelo is a true salt of the earth kind of beer. I love you attacking UFC too, because we're going head to head with UFC 300, which I, uh, somebody left a comment about it. We're against the prelims though. So I feel like we're okay, but people are really like stoked about UFC and you did an episode about it of LOL. So I, you might be in the boat as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I used to love playing uh, DFS for UFC. It's a fun, you know, DFS sport, but uh, I've been like too busy now. That was like pre-kid, you know, like you sit around on a Saturday afternoon, right? And you can like build your lineups and stuff. And as you know, on the weekends, how much time do you have to spend like two hours, like running Sims and tweaking with MMA lineups? So it is one of the things that did not make the cut uh, post-kid. But yeah, it seems like a fun card, but when you combine not having time to make lineups and there's no way in hell I'm staying up until like 1 a.m. when the the final events are going to be. I was just like, you know what? Who, who cares? What has been the biggest change for you with the the child post child life? Because for me, like NBA DFS left because that's when we have to be online, you know, 7 p.m. every night, at least that last hour making lineups and you have to be updating throughout the night, which has been a thing that your know, DraftKings has tried to address. But for me, that was the first cut. Like what really got cut for you because you manage your stream schedule? Like what have you had to shift the most? Um, I, I really do think it, it was a lot of that stuff, like just kind of the fun, like DFS play watching, yeah. like what, what are the things I, I miss is just like having a random Saturday where Lauren and I would be like, let's just binge watch a TV show. Like we are, uh, it took us like forever to get through the Oscar knobs. We're, we're watching three body problem right now. And it's like one episode every three nights. And I'm like hooked on it. And I'm just like, even tonight I said, I like apologized to Lauren. I was like, yeah, sorry, we can't watch another uh, three body problem tonight. I feel like it's just like little stuff like that, which again, uh, small sacrifices in the grand scheme of things, but I get getting to luxuriate and being lazy is, is definitely what gets axed. You're watching Shogun too, right? Yes. Which is so fucking good. Uh, Shogun's great. I mean, that's like, to me, that's the game of Thrones level of high art. I've not watched three body problem. Alex, like big reader. She said the books are really good. So she wants to watch it. I, haven't gotten there. I feel like I'm going to try Fallout next, but Shogun to me is like 
it cut through the noise, which I think is the hardest part at this point when you do have the child and you just have your kind of comfy routines of watching How I Met Your Mother like we have. Yeah, and it is funny. Like, I'm enjoying Three Body Problem, but going from Shogun to Three Body, it was like, you realize, like, Shogun is just operating on another level as far as, like, what TV can do. And then Three Body's like, yeah, this is, like, a fun Netflix-style show, like, you know, uh, keeps you engaged. But Shogun, um, the amount that they get out of their actors with so little uh, dialogue, just, like, the reactions, they've just set the table to where every scene means something. And, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. I'm sad there's only two shows le or episodes, and I'm sad that this is, like, just a single uh, season of television. Like, there's not going to be a second season of Shogun. Yeah, it's, I mean, we both have a Japan thing, though, because Japan, like, that was your big pre-COVID thing, right? You were going to go to Japan. Yeah. And, like, we've had that same dream, too, of, like, we want to go to Japan. And, obviously, if you go to Japan now, you're probably not getting Shogun. Uh, if you go there, I, I have to assume. I don't know firsthand. But but I think that's part of it, too, where it's, like, the allure. And I feel like that country is just, like, it's so interesting, the history they have and, like, the, the respect for tradition. I feel like that's something, not to be full MAGA mode here right away, but I feel like that's something where it's, like, I, I can't relate to that at all. Yeah, and I just want you to know, like, if we can't agree on a pick tonight, one of us will have to get commit seppuku instead of uh finishing the stream that's the level of honor and it's like it's you gotta shove the knife around see where the sword around it's like it can't just be a straight cut you're just jiggling it it doesn't seem like a good time at least they made an addendum i didn't know this part of like the seppuku the the seconding of being like let's expedite this by someone coming behind you and chopping your head off like at least they do that right as opposed to we're gonna let you have a slow agonizing death as you bleed out from your intestines Oh, all the Japan fans, <laughs> Japan fans coming in peace here talking about how great it is, which Just I'm sure is, I have a friend right yeah. now on Instagram who I see who's going out and like all the sushi places and like, and she's not like a master, you know, influencer photographer or anything, but like this, the photos of regular sushi. I'm like, God, I wish I need that in my life so bad. Yeah, we had, it, it tilts me every time I talk about it. We had booked uh, multiple reservations. One, we, you know, the, the, the chalk uh, hero dreams of sushi restaurant. Oh, uh, that's so hard to get though, right? Yeah, it was it was very hard to get, and uh, yeah, and letting that go uh, pained me very much. Oh well, I'm glad to <laughs> glad to open that wound. <laughs> we but we still got. But you know what? If this is what I tell myself, Spags, if uh, that trip didn't get canceled because of COVID, I wouldn't have started streaming around the clock. I probably would have been much slower to leave my job. You and I would have never have met, and we wouldn't be doing this stream right now uh if it weren't for me not getting to go to japan i guess how do you feel about that because you know we're talking about covid briefly and we are going to hop in the draft and i know we're going to do i guess more convo at least with the other guys doing best black for dark for us it might just be us shitting on each other and having that be the hour of it but like for you you kind of set a trend with that time period where you went after it obviously having a brick involved too but doing the drafts doing all that and now it's like you know for me it's been a pathway i've followed other people out there they're trying to follow what you've done then proxy what i've done and it's interesting because like it's it's a thing for me like you're the trailblazer and kind of making this this content work and you know having it be a viable pathway well and i i mean i listen to interviews across like a bunch of different stuff like you'll hear entrepreneurs and like so many people are like yeah and then i just started my business when COVID hit like i feel like it was a lot of people who used it as an opportunity to pivot partly because you're just stuck at home and you're wanting to get creative and you're like, wow, I do actually have some time on my hands. I'm not just going to play League of Legends DFS around the clock. Why don't I try to do something vaguely productive? So yeah, it, it is truly, I think like both of us and lots of people would have gotten here or whatever here means eventually, but that's certainly like expedited things in a way that I'm very thankful for. You feel like the poker guys doing similar things, and I know that's something I've heard, but I feel like for you, you were the first one to put drafts out there. Obviously, the ship chasing guys too. And and Pat, by the way, we I think we're talking about children without yeah. missing the big thing. Uh, Pat Corain has a baby girl, which you guys both being girl dads, Lucas, Lucas option pool is getting getting bigger. By the I moment. know. I I mean, I'm already offended by one of the jokes you made uh, right when April was born about trying to match make them. Yeah, every so Gretch has two daughters, uh, obviously myself and now Pat. So yeah, we're full girl dad uh you know four wow. girls between us now so who's got the highest testosterone amongst us all i think that's the question we have to ask <laughs> is is that is there is there a direct correlation between testosterone and having I boys know, i thought i was gonna have a girl like i thought the yeah. karmic parts of you know being a single guy in new york and la for my 20s and early 30s i thought that would catch up and instead i got a boy he's just now a meathead who smashed his head like five times a day yeah i uh i took april like i take her to this like little gym class thing and no one showed up for her age group today and so she basically just had like a one-on-one -on -one, and then they have an, the older kids class after like two and up and i was like you know let's just let's just stay for this because she didn't really get a socialized 
class and they were all kids that sound like Luca. And it was just, it was too overwhelming. I was like, not only are these kids way older than you, but they're a bunch of boys and they're just like ramming themselves into things. And I'm like, all right, this is, this is too much for my 16 month old girl. We're getting you out of this situation. It's all the perspective though. Cause Luca's been to some of those like indoor play area things and outdoor ones too. And it's like the older kids just shove the little kids around no matter what. So I feel like that <laughs> it's just the food chain of it all, even though like, I agree, like it's as the parent, you're like, please fucking be careful around my kid. Yeah. Um, it is, uh, it, it's tough to balance because yeah, you, you like that element of them figuring things out. Um, but on the other hand, you see what some of these boys are like. I always remember Ricky beers in the, uh, the posit kingdom discord. He was just like little, little girls are angels and little boys are assholes. And, uh, that has been, uh, true <laughs> to my experience so far. So Pete was saying that we should offer it up to everybody. I didn't realize we we're going to hop in a room that had most of the people already in it. So we are already in a draft room here, Pete. We have, do we feel like your screen size is adequate now? I, I've resized, I redid things. I also moving background thing. I know you're doing that. I did a moving background. You see the sun moving across the screen. Now we got, Oh, look at you. <laughs> um, uh, let's go to the draft board. Cause I need to know how quickly we need to, what are we at? One. So we're, at, okay. we're in the middle. So this is perfect for the bit. Yeah. So I think the way this is going to have to flow and this is, yeah, this is nice that we're in the middle because this is randomizer ask when you're on the turn, uh, it's way more chaotic to do challenges. Um, so yeah, right before we're about to pick, I will start writing down who I think we should take. And this is where I think this gets fun, right? This is almost like the apples to apples thing, right? We're like not writing down what we want. We're writing down or saying what we think the other person is going to say, right? Because we want to be collective. We're not just both writing down individually who we want to take, right? We're trying to like find that middle ground of the hive mind, I think. So, I mean, and then I think with every round, if we disagree, then I would say it has to be a swig, right? It can't be a sip because like if it's, because we like, if yes. we agree on 10 out of 20, you know, it's, it's not going to be, we're not gonna get the full effect. I, I want to see from the chat, what do you guys think out of these 20 picks, how many we agree on? I think this is going to be harder than people think. Like, even if you and I, like, had the exact same drafting preferences, which I think we do have a lot of similarities, I still think there'd be so much deviation in individual picks. Well, I guess we'll find out with this one coming up here. So we're at pick seven. We'll look at the board in a moment. I do want to read this uh, chat from Consiglieri, of course, uh, a diehard here of both uh, Peach streams, my streams here, of course, on Splashplay and our combined ones. Are you making After Dark available for Splashplay subscribers? Someone kicked me out um, with my randomizer sub. You put it for free tonight, right? Because I nobody's paying for me to come behind the paywall. I get that. Sam Hopp and maybe I, Josh Norris, they might. For me, they just want to see it for free if they, if they I want. I didn't mean to uh, put it for free. Uh, I will definitely... Uh, Make sure it's for members only, but how about this? I will make it uh, all tiers. Normally, I make it uh, just uh, best ball value hounds, uh, but yes, uh, I will make it members only, all channel members. So you are in the clear uh, for tonight, Consiglier. All right, there we go. And of course, I did put the link here in the pinned comments as well if you want to join Pete's channel. I think we now have enough people who are on this channel that might not be subscribed to Pete's. And of course, you get access to the Deposit Kingdom, all the Pete's ears, which I think is a great thing. And I feel like, Pete, the Deposit Kingdom for you, um, obviously a great part of your portfolio, but like, really moving along. And also, you need to put your pick yeah. on a card. All right. Yeah. So this this one I have. All right. I uh, So I, I got to make sure. Man, I actually. Okay. I'm actually changing. Okay. Um, all right. I wrote down who I think. Who do you think we should take? I think Amonra. Yeah. Okay. I was going to write down Brees, and I knew you were going to say uh, Amonra. So we got that one right. I thought you were going to go Brees. I guess I should have get. Okay. I should have followed you. If I wanted to get you drunk, I should have gone with Brees. That, that is. Yeah. Well, that, see, that's why there's the gamesmanship, right? Because it's like, I, if it was me, I was going to take Brees. So I literally wrote B down on the, on the first card. I was going to start writing Brees. And then I was like, no, I remember Spags is not a Brees guy. He doesn't want to be a running back piggy in the first round. So he's going to take uh, a Mon Ra. I mean, for but us to a draft together, which we haven't done a draft together since like last February, I feel like, cause that was when we switched to the versus mode. Like, I think I have, we have to go zero RB. We can't go, we can't go little RB piggies at this point. Well, you know what? This is see the the chat might think this is a little bit of cheating, like to to talk about our strategy ahead of time because that funnels us to more similarities here. Uh, you know what I mean? So I I think we should point. 
we should live in the moment of each pick a little bit more. How how do you feel about approaching running back early? Because I've been pretty diehard on first seven running backs. I feel good enough where I'm willing to, to break the chains of zero RB to do that. But like after that, you know, Josh Jacobs, I see the merits. Derrick Henry, I see the merits. But both guys analytically, I guess in particular, Jacobs, not that great last year. Like, how do you feel about approaching RB? Like, are you going by modal more? Or like, what are you doing for your well, approach? It's it, The thing is, is like, even if you wanted to be a running back piggy, like if you want to do a hyper fragile draft, there's one running back in the third round. It's Josh Jacobs. And then there's like two running backs in the fourth round, you know, Derrick Henry and, and ETN. And then there's like James Cook and then another gap. So it's like, even if you want to do that, you would basically have to be reaching like way ahead of ADP to even have that kind of build. So yeah, no, I've, I think I have one double anchor RB in my big board portfolio. Let me see the uh, available players here. Oh yeah. You got to um, make your pick here. Yeah, well, once this pick goes, okay, I'm going to write down who I Look, think. This clock uh, is weird, too. The, our yeah. clock started at 21, so things are... Stay yours. Who do you um, want? I'll go Devon Achan. Oh, oh, see, I thought you, you just said you didn't want to be running back. <laughs> I thought for sure you'd want Drake London there. I got to give the people what they want. I got to make you drink. All right. <laughs> cheers. Come on. Hey, cheers to Pete. Hey, glad to re be reunited here once again. And uh, again, I'm going to make Pete drink if I can. Though Achan, I'm happy with. Like, I've... I, I like HN too, but I just thought for sure you were going to be like, hey, let's keep pissing yellow. Now, I I agree for the most part, but again, I had to make you drink once here to start it off. We got it. We know we know what the content is. People have to see one drink to know that we'll have some throughout. So that's the payoff. Well, Number two, Drake London, I'm okay with. I, I'm tired of paying the steep Drake London price, like price tag. Like I've seen enough people projecting out there trying to figure out like how the Atlanta offense works. I still buy in. I think they're kind of the Detroit of this year where. I, they're chalk in terms of the expectation of them rising, but I, I think they're going to rise. I'm still tired of taking Drake London, and I'm going to take enough A-chan right now. So that's basically it. Yeah, I've taken a decent amount of A-chan because I basically don't take Taylor and Barkley at all. I, I want to. I wanted to start getting more Taylor. Like Sean has started making a pretty convincing argument. He was one of the guys I uh, talked about in that video where I was comparing rankings from leg up ETR and Rotoviz and. ETR and leg up were both way bearish on Taylor and Sean is like slightly ahead of market still. And I just read a Gretsch post this morning. He's back in on Taylor. So uh, those guys swaying me, but outside of that, like HN has been really my only running back target in round two. What do you think the split is between HN and Mostert? Cause I think best case scenario for HN, he's getting a 60, 40 split favoring him. I think it's more likely 50, 50 and at least until like, you know, maybe the wheels can fall off for Mostert, but the ADP in general, I don't love. I think he should be maybe 30s when you account for that risk. But, like, how do you feel about the split? Yeah, I guess I'm like, it, it, maybe this is just such a bad take, but it's like, I, I don't care. Uh, I'm like, I'm drafting HN for, like, the explosive plays. Um, and I think the thing that's nice about HN, right, is it's like, he didn't get pigeonholed into not being like a goal line back. We would see them use him a lot around the goal line and even like creative stuff. So I feel like I just want him to get his 12 to 15 touches a game, stay healthy and do a Chan things. Like that's what I'm doing, which is like similar. Isn't it pretty similar for Gibbs too? you know, in that way where it's yeah, like, I do you really have to worry about the split that much? You're, you're, you're banking on the high end efficiency. And then we're hoping that one of those nuke games, 30 plus points comes in week 16 or 17. Like that's basically what you're hoping for. And both HN and Gibbs are capable of doing that. All right, so I have to show you the board. Uh, Malik Neighbors going at the turn pretty reliably now. I, I love Malik Neighbors. I think he's really impressive. I think he's got the case to be, you know, 1A, 1B with Marvin Harrison. That said, his outcomes, Pete, I know you write about this a lot with the, you know, the Fancy Life newsletter in particular. I feel like neighbors outcomes in terms of where he's going to land, they get worse by the day in terms of where he's going to go. The Titans he's going to go the giants. Like I don't like either of those spots. Titans would be brutal uh, yeah. because then you have like uh target competition and bad quarterback play, at least with the giants. Um, you know, you have zero target competition and you have day ball. Who's like proven historically. Okay. Let man. Okay. He's I a brutal board. We're not getting great picks <laughs> for ourselves here. See, and I, I, I'm, I feel bad. I haven't been watching as many of your streams, so I don't even know where you're at. But say who you want. All right, I got Laporta. Ah, oh, fuck! I thought you were still a Pittman slappy. You not? No, no, no. I, I hate the price anymore? sack for Pittman. I'm taking What's, Laporta here. It's not here. even that different from last year. What? It's like a round and a half different. Yeah, it's he was in the mid 50s most of last year, like 60s, yeah. 70s. After that, now at 30, I think they're going to add somebody. 
Um, I still believe in AR a lot. Like I think he's going to be great, but now the price tag is too public. And that's my whole thing is like when things get too public, I kind of want to dial back. Man, I thought you were a zero. You know what? I should have, I should have known with Amon Ra that you would have been more willing. But I, when I see Spags, I Michael Pittman jumps off the page, and it's not even that you like Michael Pittman. It's just you go, I gotta stack him with him. It's that I think I also like I know the rookie receivers enough that we can manage those pockets. But we have to drink now, so yeah, we disagreed again. Hey, cheers. We're we're one for. One for three here. One for three, yeah. Thirty-three percent clip. Great in baseball, not great in basketball. That'd be how that goes. But look, we're gonna have to make it up a receiver. We're getting we got zero RB guys right next to us here. So I've been trying to make it up with receiver. I've picked two receivers these past rounds. You're the one that keeps going off the beaten path. I, I actually I did promise Pete that I wasn't like this premise would keep him from not getting too drunk. But I <laughs> I, I, I feel like this is just the board is speaking to me in a certain way. <laughs> I'm following. It's like a Ouija board. I'm just following it without even control. But remember, again, I am trying to meet in the middle here, and you're just jamming your agenda down our throat. There's there's no meeting in the middle with these picks. <laughs> okay, I'll try to meet in the middle more. Look, we're going to have to hit receiver now. Like, we've made our choices, so I think we're, we're on the same page. But the Detroit stack, I, I'm still happy to get this Detroit combo. Yeah, I like the Detroit stack. I will say, like, I, I don't mind doing double uh, elite tight end uh, mm -hmm. build. I agree I with you. I don't. I don't do it as much with Laporta. And I think the reason I don't have as much Laporta is just because I love the prices on all the fifth round and sixth round guys a ton. Um, and so generally I feel like there'll come a point in the fifth, sixth or seventh round where you're like, man, the tight end is still the best pick here. I kind of wish I had a wide receiver in the third instead. All right. What are we going to write down here? <laughs> so the, oh no. My, my pick was going to be Romo Dunze. That's gone now. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. Don't say anything. Yeah. All right, I, I'm. I'm it is all right, I'm writing a name down. Who do you want? Uh, T. Higgins. Yes. Okay, okay. I knew it. Oh, boy. We got I, boxed out of receiver pretty bad. It's <laughs> not yeah. a good time. I assumed you wanted to, for lack of better word, swerve the Rashi Rice uh, pick there <laughs> and go down to the next available wide receiver. It's not a bad value. Where were you with Rashi Rice this entire time? Because I've, I've, I've watched your streams. I feel like you haven't had a big Rashi Rice take before unless I entirely miss it, which is possible. Like for me, I thought he was overpriced. Now that he's coming yeah. down, I think he's at his more appropriate price. And I think he doesn't miss more than two to four, I guess, to be the max games at this point. R to me, Rashi Rice, I think my like main take has been like the – the tier from like after Garrett Wilson comes off the board to like after Waddle and neighbors, well neighbors at the time he's now moved up. Like I thought that was just like one giant tier and every single guy that was going at the front of the tier, I had sticker shock with. Um, so like you with like Drake London recently, I was like that with Rashi rice, but then you look around and I'm like, I can't make a strong case for like why you should take him over him. And so it was more just like, you have to take some one wide receiver in that you know two to three round range and it's hard to argue with people who want to sort it one way or another i guess is where i've settled on it i, I just hated the price tag because like the assumption to me the entire time was they're going to add somebody in free agency they did um somebody in the draft which you know we'll see what they add at draft capital it does seem like the guys bring in for for top 30 visits are kind of like lower draft capital guys but to me it was just like the even the plan going into this year was that oh he's going to run travis kelsey kind of routes we're going to be lower a dot routes he's not going to have the downside kind of upside that you know, some of the guys in that offense have had, even though Justin Watson sucks, MBS sucks. Like they're getting deep targets. I feel like that's the issue for me with Rice. And then you add in now the legal stuff. Like I think he should be 40s, 50s. And if they add somebody in the draft who's good, like he should be, I don't know, like 50s, 60s. Yeah. Yeah, I I agree with you. And uh, I think, I think what, because the next time we see like a true price for him will be after, the the draft and whoever they take will will certainly impact that a good bit probably even more so than what's going to go on with the legal stuff because we just see that drag out so many times i mean the camara stuff i feel like yeah. just never uh even in, uh took hold in impacting him in a real way so someone took josh allen and lamar <laughs> jackson wow yeah, this room is weird. We have double, like double lead tight end very early, which I agree with you. I like the bully tight end approach, but I like it kind of spaced out a little bit more with like guys in the top 10. Um, Allen and Jackson, I hate, you know, taking Allen that much unless you're really setting up kind of interesting Bill stuff. But Allen and Jackson, we're getting, uh, you know, a unique room for you on stream, which I, I've learned this year. Like the stream rooms are not the most fun. You have to make your pick on right. a card though. So here's the board. Well, yeah, after this pick, I'm looking at the board here. Um, Okay, this is going to be, um, 
Interesting. I have no clue about your preferences in this range. All right, I wrote down a name. All right, I got Amari Cooper. Fuck. I, I mean, I was going to write Amari or Marquise. I, I didn't know <laughs> if you were going to be out on the old, so I wrote Marquise. I, I'm down on Marquise. I think Marquise, for me, I, I think they're going to add somebody who might be better. Marquise being so bad in Arizona just left a bad taste in my mouth. I know it's still a better outcome being in KC, but like, what if he's just fancy MVS? I feel like that's my fear. Cheers. So, so I I agree with you. I, I want to be most bullish about the first round rookie they add if if they add a first round rookie. But I do think like portfolio wise, if you're wanting to like fade the Rashi Rice stuff, you know, because you think there's an impending suspension and stuff, I do also think you need to, you know, move Marquise Brown up accordingly, right? Because there still is the chance that they go another direction. They don't invest significant draft capital in a wide receiver. Like, I think that's a small probability, but it could happen, in which case Marquise Brown is set up really, really nice. And we've seen Marquise Brown operate as more than just a situational deep threat, you know, at certain points during his career where he's been able to earn targets at a high rate. So I want to make sure I have some exposure to that outcome. People saying Cooper's sharp pick. Nice price on Cooper. I agree with that. I, I get it with Marquise Brown. Like, I think just the thing that stuck out with me is Arizona wasn't bad last year. There are no spike week games. He's still a negative EPA per target guy while getting, you know, past the line of scrimmage kind of level targets. And I think that's what stands out for me with Marquise Brown. I feel like he's an Antonio Gibson to me where he's like a very public player. People liked him in the past. He did some nice things maybe for people's like season long fantasy football teams. And to me, those guys, like, it doesn't mean they're good forever. And he's better than Justin Watson and MVS, but uh, I don't know how much that matters. How do you feel about this take? And that would be that Amari Cooper's ADP would probably be like two to three rounds lower if Deshaun Watson played the whole season with him. And his ADP is boosted because he went fucking nuclear with Joe Flacco down the stretch, who is uh, not going to be his quarterback this year. Can Deshaun be good again? I feel like the bet you're making on Cooper is that Deshaun can be passable, at least if not good. Yeah, I mean, that's why you take Marquise Brown because you don't have to question whether Patrick Mahomes is going to be good. And you do have to question that with uh, with Deshaun Watson. I guess that's fair. I feel like for Brown, though, it's just, you know, the Chiefs showed a preference to not, you know, to not throw the ball if they can last year, even though Mahomes is so great. I think that's the leap that great QBs make is like they gain an efficiency, they lose in the the fantasy kind of fun metrics. So I, oh, fuck, I wanted Brian Thomas yeah, Jr. Yeah, right trust me, I know you did. <laughs> um, Hey, Okay. I, I, I mean, was, I, I was already writing. Uh, I was already writing Brian Thomas down if he was there. Uh, I have my name down. I have Deontay Johnson. What? You're Deontay Johnson over Addison? Who the fuck are you, dude? I am out sorry. here. <laughs> you wait. Now you like all the old bad wide receivers? <laughs> he's not Jesus, old and bad. He played a lot better six last months. year. Now Can he's going to an old slappy. His God. worst case is fancy Adam Thielen. His best case is like being a dude that matters. Um, I think that the, the his best case scenario is a guy who produces a little weeks one through 10 and then does nothing for you in the fantasy no, playoffs. Sign Dave me up. Canales, in the I, you, you know this for a while though. Like I believe in coaching upgrades. Dave Canales is like a massive upgrade. He got the most out of Baker. Baker was rejuvenated. Baker got a, like a massive deal off of that too. So that's what I believe in is that he's going to get the most out of Bryce young. And as a result, Deontay Johnson is going to look good. And, Frankly, he recovered a lot in the analytics I look at last year, even with, you know, the play calling being whatever it was with Matt Canada. So I think he's got a shot and we're we're and we're down at wide receiver. Like Brian Thomas would have been a lot also, better, I agree. I feel this is how I feel. Uh, even setting our arguments aside, the board, the picks we get wrong should be alternating back. The <laughs> ones that were wrong, you're just taking who you want every single time. Okay, like, I'll how am I getting, not getting I, one of I'm, these? You're right. You're right. You're right. I, I, I'm controlling the board a little bit too much. I didn't know. We didn't agree on what the answer was for the picks. We also agreed to write these down, and then you didn't show up. Some <laughs> that of was us did not prep the work. Tax, Pete. That was not. That was not state, stated for Bowden, and it's like that I couldn't just come off it off the top of my head. I thought we were just. Yeah, you know, kind of spitball. All right, I'm going to read for the people because I hate it when people try to pull receipts and they're wrong. What if we do a draft together and before every pick, we each write down who we think we should take? Let <laughs> you let the write, chat wait, interpret wait, that. Actually, okay, I'm looking at the text. I'm looking at the text. You say you said write down, really? Yes. Uh, I had what a if typo we do a draft because together? I was blasting on my phone, but oh, it was right. You did misspell right. <laughs> This, this doesn't absolve you of not me not saying right down. I think I'm absolved. I think I was you not. You're not. <laughs> like, what if we're writing down? Like, what if we're just getting it right? You they know, that kind of thing. Get out of here. <laughs> get out of here.
All right, I, I'll I'll defer to you on whatever the next one is. That is my promise, no matter but, what. But Spags, you are missing the mission. You are like the person that plays apples to apples and can't get out of their own way. Uh, oh. We are trying to meet in the middle, and you're just jamming your agenda down. I'm trying to actually guess who you're going to pick, and you're just like, I want Deontay Johnson. <laughs> All right, Chip's saying misspelling right is tough. I agree. I mean, a pizza busy man. I get it. Yeah. Chip, Chipsy is like the most illiterate person in the entire Discord, and he and he's the one tossing strays at me. The dude. Uh, I mean, right he's... The, I've never seen a guy. Uh, I mean, he's the fucking president of run on sentences. Get the fuck out of here, Chipsy. <laughs> and uh, no, it was not like Jalen right. It was spelled like right, like right or wrong. So I, I got confused. It threw me off. I'm a man of perfect grammar, accurate oh. diction. All right. Um, hang on. Let me see the full team because now I have to start like baking in other considerations. Yes. Beyond team reads. Uh, we have Devon A. Chan at running back, Amon Ross, St. Brown, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper, Deontay Johnson, a wide receiver, tight end Sam Laporta. So we can go back to running back. We could do some fun bully tight end stuff. We don't, don't, Higgins no, TV. no, no. The, the, the point is not to. I'm setting it up to... for the people, not us. <laughs> Leave something to the imagination, Spags. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, you have to see the full board. Okay, so here's here's the board. I need to be able to see the picks. I do. It does help that I'm I'm putting out too much content for Pete to keep up with. It's like the main thing. So there's some guys oh. I love on the board right now, and you just don't know. I mean, there's a couple. There's one you know, but there's a couple you don't know. All right, I wrote I wrote down the best pick for this team right now, and I hope you is agree. it Joe Burrow. Okay, yeah, I, we got to do it. It's fine. I love Brock Bowers, though. I, I am very, I'm in love with Brock Bowers. I think he's a great prospect. Him not doing athletic testing, he thinks he's Marvin Harrison. I get it, but I would like to see him be an athlete, be the one risk. Yeah, I, I like Bowers as well. Um, but I, I think in these rooms, too, like quarterback can get very dicey uh, quickly. And I think getting Burrow there. Uh, just helps us uh, have a lot of patience, right? Because we can wait for an ADP value at our second quarterback. We can do a two QB build if it breaks right. Um, with guys like Watson and Bryce Young, you, you're open to very cheap uh, QB three builds, three QB builds. Um, so yeah, I just kind of like the Burrow pick to open us up for a lot of other options. Uh, Pete, would you agree or disagree with the take from Christopher? Spags argues like my girlfriend. Oh, I get out of it on insert technicality. I don't think that's fair. I think, A, that'd be more little child arguing than it would be like a girlfriend it's, arguing. It sounds, it sounds exactly what I'm dealing with here, except I didn't <laughs> let Spags get out of it. Uh, we, we agreed on a pick here. We'll see what we agree on next. Any other macro takes you have this year? Like, I, I feel like the rookies, I've seen you be pretty evenly balanced on a lot of your stuff. So is there any, like, anything takey you have that I can yell at you about? Um, I mean, macro takes, uh, yeah, tons of elite tight ends, tons of zero RB, and anchor RB builds. Um, Rookie wide receiver, is anybody you're leaning yeah. heavy on? Uh, Xavier Worthy. Uh, I'm just, I think every time I see any mock draft that has him out of the first round, I just laugh. It's become more of a consensus opinion over the past couple months, but or past month, I would say. But it was not for a while. Uh, but now, like, I think even ETR put out, like, a prop bet, like, Xavier Worthy, first round pick. And my whole thing is, like, we know all of the first round picks last year closed as top 84 picks. And like, you can still get guys like AD Mitchell and Xavier worthy at times outside pick 100. Um, let me see here. Um, all right. I am writing down a pick. Tell me who you think is the best player for this team. Uh, David and Joku. Wow. No, I said AD Mitchell. Uh, okay. I'll defer to you. I'll go to AD Mitchell. Well, so we have to get some like young, exciting players on this team after you fucking nuked it with Amari <laughs> and uh, Deontay Johnson. I, I like honestly, relative to Mitchell, relative to Worthy, I, Worthy, I can go with a little bit more. And Mitchell has some unique athletic things that I, I think I'm not all the way there on because Worthy like, was gone. Yeah, no, I agree. But like, yeah. I'm just saying analytically, like Worthy wasn't that great at Texas. Mitchell wasn't really that great at Texas. They like the, these things that I obsess over. I'd rather have Leggett later. I'd rather have McConkey a little bit later. Like I'd rather have guys that are going to be producing, you know, for McConkey, he's just a great route runner. I, I don't agree with him being wide receiver five. Like I'm in the bag for, I guess I shouldn't say this to you. I'm in the bag for Troy Franklin, Pete. I think he's really good. I don't agree with him being wide receiver 10 in the class. Like he produced at a high level, high target route run rate, also high EPA guy. So like, these are the guys I'm obsessed with more. So I think you can hit wide receiver and get rookies later that are undervalued. Ricky Pearsall's coming up, but I, like I was okay with him. Um, so I think Wait, rookie to me is, is a choose your own adventure. Kind did of you, did you say you're McConkey over 80 Mitchell? 
Yeah, I mean, Mitchell's got elite athleticism. McConkey going to be a better route runner and I think well, going to earn targets at a better clip, but they're pretty even analytically, like in terms of the... Okay, can the I get you to agree to... Let me see if I can get you to agree to three things in a row. Um, mm -hmm. One, do you think A.D. Mitchell is going to go ahead of Ladd McConkey in the draft? Yeah, I do. Okay. Do you think when these guys hit, like let's just say like 90th plus percentile outcomes, do you think A.D. Mitchell's is more impactful for fantasy than Ladd McConkey's? I, I don't want to defend Ladd this much, but I think A.D. Mitchell is just a better in best ball guy. I think he's, I think he's poor man's Brian Thomas. I think he's honestly poor man's. You're Troy not Franklin. answering my question though. Like poor, that's like median scenario comps. I'm saying in their best possible outcomes, who hit, who hits harder for fantasy? Uh, I think Lad. I think Lad in full point PPR. Lad does. I think. Okay, Mitchell this is will... fucking half point PPR. Where yeah. would we be talking about full point PPR? I think that Mitchell can give you like those big. He catches a one sixty yard touchdown. I think he's Jamison Williams. He's a less refined Jamison Williams. Is how I feel about him. Okay, you're still not answering my questions. The third one is on this team where we already have fucking the older version of Lad McConkey and Deontay <laughs> Johnson. We fucking swing for the fences with a guy who's going to get mid-20s draft capital, and when he hits, he hits in a massive way. First of all, kudos to you for the cross-racial comparison. That says it's a tough enough. Do you say Johnson, Ladd, and Conkey, they're both yeah. there. Uh, I agree with Mitchell being a better in best ball guy. I think he gets us younger. I I'm with those things. I'm just not as excited about him as the athletic profile is. Like He he and DK Metcalf are the only guys to be like 6'2 and have the combines they had. I get it. I just I wish he performed better in college is the main thing. All right. Um, I think you're I think you're too lost in the sauce and you just gotta pick the best players right now. Um, all right. I'm reading the board here. This could be simple. This could be simple, and it Ooh. is no longer simple because I was gonna write Trey Benson. <laughs> I, I would have been on board with Trey Benson. Um, all right. I am going to take a leap of faith. Who do you think is the best pick for this team right now? Brian Robinson Jr. Yes, let's go. Okay, Brian Robinson Jr. Are you buying in on the signal that they want to give him the ball? He's, I mean, I know you have, you had the video, of course, of the comparing ranks and, and ADPs right now. Uh, I think Brian Robinson being the lead back. I also love them getting Jane Daniels. I'm a big Jane Daniels guy. So Robinson to me checks a lot of bells. Him at 100 is too cheap. Yeah, I have, I have zero issues with him in that, uh, in that range. Uh, I am not a believer in Austin Eckler, like eating into his workload in a meaningful way. It does like take away the pass catching upside, but it's like, that's not what you're drafting Brian Robinson for. You're going to get the early down carries. You're going to get the goal line work. Um, and in a, a better offense than what they had last year. And he's going, what, this was his price last year as well. So, uh, I think he's like a perfect, like second running back in an anchor RB build or your first or second running back in a zero RB build. Where are you with Jaden Daniels? I like him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's a nice guy too. When you're getting boxed out and you're like not having to worry about stacks. I mean, when you think about how many rushing quarterbacks after pick 100 or, or I should say quarterbacks with rushing upside, like Konami code. I mean, there's like three of them. Like mm -hmm. it, it's so hard to find the guys who could just smash that ADP and like, compare his ADP to Anthony Richardson's like from best ball mania, right? Like if you're getting some of that rushing, even like 70, 80% of what you got from Anthony Richardson, you're still getting it at what? Like a seven round discount. So we're coming up here with a pick. Um, I think we should go up and get, well, okay. Well, yeah. Hey God, I, I forgot to write this down here. Yeah. You got to write something here. Look at, here's the board. There's more guys down here. Is what I would say, dude. I, I, I'm lost here. I'm, I'm just taking a shot in the dark. Who do you want? I want Jaden Daniels. Okay. Well, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> we were Jayden talking Brown. about him. He's gonna go before we pick next, I think, and I think he'll, he'll make us done at QB, and we get the rushing touchdowns from Washington. I would bet. This, Spags, this is what I love about you. Like this whole. The whole bit of this stream is to just let the chaos wash over us. And you cannot bring yourself. I just got played because I was so naive. I thought you were just having a random tangent about Jaden Daniels. You were trying to fucking lead the witness. Guys, <laughs> are you so worried about, about a team getting ruined? That you're trying to fucking gaslight me into taking Jane Daniels right so now? So here's the main thing is that I just want to catch up with you about guys that I love and Jane Daniels I love because I think he's AR plus CJ Stroud. So I'm very bullish on him and I want you to be bullish on him because I think he's fantastic.
that's that's your comp. Anthony Richardson plus CJ Stroud. Yes, that's I mean, it. I mean, analytically, that's the comp. Yeah, like at the numbers I look at and like obsessed by. Yeah, that's that's a comp. Yeah. Well, I think then you need to say pre NFL draft CJ Stroud because when you say Richardson and Stroud, people are going to color on rookie year CJ Stroud and what Anthony Richardson did. I think they're both going to come. I think, I think that's it. Like I, I look, I feel like one of my best things last year was I nailed rookies. I had most of my guys, right. There were a few, like I wasn't as bullish on a chan as I should be. That's the one thing I regret, but I still was in my portfolio, but analytically, like to me, I look at Jane Daniels. I literally see CJ Stroud's numbers last year. I look at the rushing stats. He looks like AR. Like I think he's the best of both. And I love Caleb Williams too. Like I think Chicago takes a leap. Jane Daniels to me is like, he might be the fantasy QB one in terms of rookies and fantasy QB two two or three maybe in terms of the overall well cj stroud is pretty soon going to be the dynasty qb1 so if yeah. jane daniels is that plus anthony richards and he's going before the draft even starts which is impressive which i think accounting for you know the risk profile i get like jaden should be lower now but i will say one thing that made me feel good is like last year i felt like ar should go ahead of trevor lawrence Relves ADPs this year, AR is going where that would have been last year. For Jaden Daniels, I think he's going to be a top three round guy next year, would be my guess. How how much of this for you is because, like, a huge thing, right? Is everyone is now assuming Jaden Daniels is going to Washington, which is a far better situation. I have the entire time, too, for what it's worth, than New England, which I still, I still think that I'm not entirely convinced that's. For sure, but if he were to go to New England, how much would you change your tune on Jaden Daniels' redraft excitement? I think it doesn't matter where he goes; he's still going to be great no matter what. Washington would be easier because you already have Terry McLaurin there, who's a veteran deep ball target. Dotson, I think, can do enough uh, enough underneath stuff. Adding Ertz, like I think they're doing kind of the poor man's version of what Chicago's doing, where you add some guys that are okay enough, give your guys some weapons coming in. Uh, but I think his talent is so strong. Like I, the video parts of it look great. The analytics of him, like he's a historical QB in terms of the analytics. And you add in the rushing stuff, I, there's a risk of him getting hurt like AR did last year. But I'm not going to ever dock a guy for that. I can't. I can't guess that he's going to get hurt. So besides that, I think he looks great. Yeah. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you like the play? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he gets hit hard. He gets like the Wiley Coyote hits. We, I get it. But. All right. No more fucking leading the witness. No more yeah. saying like it would really be nice to get our second tight end here. This kind of bullshit. Here's the thing is that there's a player on the board I like a lot, but we need to get running back going too. So what's your pick? Stop. Stop. Stop <laughs> trying to do it for the people. The content. No, because <laughs> all right, who do you want? Who no, who do you think is the best pick for this team? That's the question. Devin Singletary. Fuck. Okay. Pick? I pick Gus Gus Edwards, and he's the pick because you got the all right, last Yeah, no, one. that's fine. I'll give you Gus. Um, I was I thought. Before you started playing your games, I knew you wanted Troy Franklin. I was. Gonna I love Troy Franklin. Franklin. Yeah, I know you do. That's why I was going to try to read you. I'm playing poker. You're just fucking blasting off what you want to happen in this draft. I'm just trying to build a nice team, and like we could have taken a receiver there. We need a running back more. No, the goal isn't to draft. The goal is to draft a nice team together, Spags. <laughs> I'm. I think we're building a great team together. Let's read the team, Pete. How do you? What could we have done better with Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels? Devon H. Chan, Brian Robinson recording a market on Washington touchdowns. Gus Edwards, our RB3, went a little bit late there, maybe. Uh, Amon Ross, St. Brown, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper. We have some AFC North correlation. Deontay Johnson, Adonai Mitchell, and then Sam Laporta. We have we have QBs who could beat Jared Goff with Detroit Stack. I think we've done some nice things. Uh, honestly, the only pick. So I have my issues with you are, are the process and how you're handling the premise of this show. The only pick that makes me visibly angry is the Deontay Johnson one. Other than that, I think this is a nice team. Okay. I, I Why are you down on Deontay Johnson? I feel like you defended him from me last year and he had a better year. Well, you like you, you made my case for me. Like you're getting a poor man's Adam Thielen, which is something you can arbitrage like much better later in the draft like you can even get a better version of Deontay Johnson and Tyler Lockett like two three rounds later I would rather take Lad McConkey three rounds later my comp because I'm a woke genius uh when I try to do that like I'd rather get that kind of stuff or even Curtis Samuel on Buffalo like if I'm just hunting targets and knowing I'm not going to get a lot of you know touchdown upside or true breakout upside like I think I can get that later I just think Carolina moves up this year. I, Dave Canales, hunky OC coming into Tampa Bay last year, did the thing for Baker Mayfield. I think Carolina is going to save 
Bryce Young's career. Uh, but we're on the board here. Uh, you can make right, your- hang on, hang on. I'm writing down again. We are answering t- collectively who is the best pick for this team right now. I think it's Chuba Hubbard. All right, let's go. Okay, Chuba Hubbard. There we go. See? So, do you think he wins the backfield? By the way, um, so yes, I think he already won the backfield. I think the risk is if they, you know, spend a day two or day three pick on another running back, then I start to get really spooked. If they don't like. Chuba is a smash here. I I like Chuba. I think that it being an open competition, I'm always going to try to take the the cheaper back in an open competition, but they've had Jonathan Brooks in. They've had enough running backs in that it makes me worried they bring in anybody. Ray Davis would honestly upset that backfield enough too that makes you want to take Chuba later, but with where we took him with the bet on Deontay, I think it makes sense. I'm I'm with you. I haven't, um, I'm trying to see in this draft, where did, where did Jonathan Brooks go? Uh, he went, let's see, or has he got to be coming up? Oh, he went at one Oh four. So yeah, he's yeah, coming up now. People say, think he's going to play week one. I normally am taking a ton of Jonathan Brooks, uh, where Chuba goes like in this range. So that was the only mm-hmm. other thing, but like, Holy cow, like Blake Corum, uh, man, he's, he went early in this one. Uh, yeah. Like Gus and Chuba are guys I like where they're my fallbacks if those rookies aren't there. Like if I can't get the Benson or the books, then guys like Gus and Chuba feel pretty good. Jerome Ford has been mine. I still like Charbonnet, but Ford I think is underpriced for a guy who's probably the, between the 20s back to start the year. Nick Chubb comes back at some point, probably on the pup list, you would think to start. I think Jerome Ford's undervalued to me. So I would still take him over Chuba in most builds, but obviously for us with having Deontay Johnson, it's easier. Deontay Foreman scared me because Mm. everywhere Deontay Foreman goes, like he earns work. Like Deontay Foreman was a big impediment, uh, impediment, uh, impediment uh, to kind of like the Roshan Johnson thesis too. So I do worry a little bit about Ford. And when he was, he was getting the volume last year, but it was kind of empty calorie stuff. They weren't using him a ton in the passing game. Then they were yanking him at the goal line for Kareem Hunt. And so I'm like, are they just going to do that all over again with Foreman and I don't know. So yeah, I, he hasn't been a guy I've gravitated to as much. Yeah, I get it. I think that if I agree with Foreman, probably doing the hunt role and taking the goal line work at the least Ford to me just showed enough. And especially when I needed him the most and my DraftKings like finalists on there were like Ford carried me through, I think week 16 in particular, and was okay. Week 17 too, or pretty good week 17. Uh, but Ford, I think has upside. I don't know if Cleveland thinks he has upside, which is the incongruence. Of course, everything we do We had another pick coming up here. And, uh, uh, Pete, the plug here. We are going to do a, the next uh, next stream on your channel. Are we going to do a draft too? Like, what are we doing for the? Uh, nor I haven't been doing drafts lately. Just been chopping. Oh, it you up cha- I'm happy just to chat too. I don't want to tease a draft. I just want to give the people what they're. Yeah, they're I think I've had enough uh, of drafting <laughs> with you for one night. <laughs> I think we've made a great team here, and we're going to make a great one coming up. Some <laughs> nice picks on the board. Some. Honestly, I don't even know where we're going to go here. So I'm actually curious. I, I, I am going to probably end up having to ask you to start scrolling down a little bit um, okay. just so I can see some options here. We're going down too far here. Yeah, just scroll back up. I'm going to write down this. See, this is where we're getting into dicey territory. All right, who do you think is the best pick for this team right now? Uh, I think Mims. See, all right. I, I, I went with a scroll down when you scrolled. I did Ricky Pearsall. Uh, when you had okay, Pierce, off. if I could get him in, I'll do it. We got him in. We got him in. The clock is weird tonight, so that's the yeah. issue for us. But you got Pierce, all. okay? Pierce, all, honestly, the underdog guys being very under him. I will say with Pierce, all, my brain block is that I thought AR made him last year, and this year I saw Pierce, all with a much worse QB, and was like, shit, Pierce, all might actually be kind of good. So I, I'm with you. I think he and Roman Wilson very similar plays though. And I think for me, again, I'm not. I'm more like agnostic on like these guys. Like I'm not, I don't have strong opinions on like Roman Wilson versus Ricky Pearsall versus Xavier Legat. I, but to me, this team needs some like rookie wide receiver upside um, right now. Like, I feel like we have a good veteran core. We only had five uh, wide receivers through what 12 rounds. And so now I want to tar- start taking some upside shots and Mims is a hard one. He is a, obviously I was in love with him last year. Uh, you know, Sean made a good case for him recently. And I still feel like Sean Payton has already kind of showed his hand when, whether that's, he doesn't actually like Mims as much as he thought he did when he drafted him or Mims isn't as good as his prospect profile indicated. I just kind of want to get better at like taking the information we got, which is one full season 
And it's either like Sean Payton is the biggest donkey in the world, like which could be true, um, or Marvin Mims isn't as good as I wanted him to be, and I'm kind of just defaulting to the latter right now. I feel like Peyton, and I'll let you see the screen here so you can make your pick. Um, I feel like Peyton was saying that Judy was the blocker, and that's the main part I read from what Peyton said was that Judy was blocking Mims from getting routes. They then trade Judy. I think Mims has a shot, but depends what they do in the draft. And shouts this chat from Christopher here. Pete's going to write down his pick. Just toss my dinner. This bloodbath wow. killed my appetite. The bloodbath continue here. Um, we need another pick. Best pick for this team right now. Uh, Kate Otten? Let's go. Okay. I, to me, to me, Otten, and I've talked about this with Corrine. I feel like Otten is like the last of kind of a tight end tier. Um, there's definitely some flyers. I don't mind, but this, I still feel like we could rock an Otten Laporta as a two tight end build, or if we really like a value, we could go three, but I like adding Otten here. It's yeah, Bay has brought in some tight ends for top 30 visits, which have kind of made me wonder a little bit about Kate Otten, but he came on strong last year. I, I'm okay on Tampa, on a bet on Tampa Bay. And honestly, I guess they haven't brought in as many tight ends as I thought. Uh, they brought in Theo Johnson. They brought in like three tight ends. I think they brought in Senate too. Uh, Tanner McLaughlin. Yeah, they brought in cheap tight ends. So probably Otten safe in the draft. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Do you want to give the team a read? So you gotta... Yeah, let's yeah let's read the team. I, I actually need it too to help reorient me on what we need to do. All right, so Joe Burrow, we got a slight discount. Jane Daniels is like ahead of ADP. We got Devon A. Chan, Brian Robinson, hopefully correlating with Jane Daniels. Gus Edwards, Chuba Hubbard. So probably have to make it up a little bit at running back. Wide receiver, Amon Ross, St. Brown, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper, Deontay Johnson, Adonai Mitchell, Ricky Pearsall, a unique wide receiver room. Sam Laporta, Kate Otten. We have QBs who could be Goff, which I think is a positive with the Detroit stack. We have HN being our anchor. Wide receiver room's weird, is what I'll give you. Yeah, I mean, structurally, I think we're in good shape. You know, we're not really behind yeah. the eight ball at any position, which if you're trying to agree via three by five note cards, that's a good spot to be. <laughs> should, I, should I pull up the board so you can start to prepare? Should I? Yeah, I mean... This this is a you know clearly a pretty gross range. Um, so we have I optionality like at positions some... though. Like we could go RB, we could go wide receiver. How about receiver. this? Yeah. How about this for these picks? Because I don't want to say like let me see you running back. How about you give me individual uh, of each position as we go? Okay, as we um, approach a pick. I would be okay at. Oh boy. I'd be okay with Keaton Mitchell. No, what are you doing? No, no, no. Oh, I thought you wanted it. me to name guys that you. No, I'm mean. saying go through each individual. Oh, just like on one by one. Okay, I'll show you. Yes. Okay, here. You're going to destroy the premise of the show. Oh, I was going to name a bunch of guys to try to pare it down. Like, if I gave you eight guys, it wouldn't have been enough to, to really help. Okay. And here's QB, too, in case you need it. Yeah. All right. What are we picking? In this is a tough here? spot. I gotta say, <laughs> I don't. I don't enjoy this spot. Yeah, I don't either. Can you give me a little scroll again, too? Yeah, on the on this main thing here. Man, absolutely. It's a it's a brutal one to choose between. Um. All right, I have no confidence in this one. We're going to be drinking. Who do you think is the best pick for this team? Keaton Mitchell. I put Rico. I I mean, you had I'll already said Keaton. You had already said Keaton, and so I was like, is he going to really just say the thing? Because I, I think we have enough early season production that we could take a shot on him siphoning a few touchdowns away in the back half of the year. But I don't think we had a good RB pick there. Like Daddle to me is coming down. Like somebody's going to go there. Benson, Brooks, yeah. whoever, Irving, hopefully. So what we're we're at a two five seven or two five, two, five six, six two yeah. yeah so Burrow Jaden Daniels a QB running back Devon A Chan uh, Brian Robinson Jr Gus Edwards Chuba Hubbard and Rico Dowdle wide receiver Monross St Brown T Higgins Amari Cooper Deontay Johnson Adonai Mitchell Ricky Pearsall tight end we're good Salem Porter Cade Otten I guess you could add a third with Cade but you don't yeah. have to um okay. And so what do we have? Five, uh, four or five more picks. We have five more picks. Okay. You're heading around 16 here. I feel like we're going to be doing a lot of, a lot of drinking. 
uh, these these next five things. I have to pee so bad. So, so bad. I couldn't set the redirect, by the way, because I had to ask you for permission. I was like, I don't want to text Pete at 7 o'clock on a Saturday. Can I get permission to your channel? So we're not redirecting here, but they can go over, obviously, YouTube.com slash you can... Peter Overset would be the channel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can. I can drop the link in the chat, too. Yeah, yeah, please. Actually, I'm, I, can, I can grab it, too. Yeah, I've had too many beers. So, the, like, that's the thing about beer, right? Where you start <laughs> drinking beers and you have to pee. That's the least fun part about streaming and drinking beers, I would say. Well, Spags, I mean, I know you don't, you know, trust me, like on the airwaves without you around here. But if you, if we need to make this pick, um, I might get nervous without you talking to the chat, but I, I do think I could maybe manage. Well, you can't make the pick, though. So that's the issue. Uh, um, one sec. All right, who do you think is the best pick for this team right now? Keaton Mitchell. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, so my, my, come hand, on down. my handwriting is getting worse. It's like I did some like Japanese character <laughs> over the over the E there. You're in Shogun mode. You're the you're yeah. the engine who's coming. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you. So like April April's like vocab is exploding right now, and she'll just like repeat anything we say. And so Lauren and I, and she also speaks in like very hard syllables. And so Lauren and I have gotten her to start saying Shogun, and it's so <laughs> funny. Like, well, she'll, she'll now, like, we'll be talking about, she'll hear Lauren and I say, like, Shogun, mm -hmm. and she'll just go, Shogun. Like, because she says, like, Shogun. It's so I like that she says it like uh, like the like the war chief or whatever. Yeah. What's the fucking name? Because <laughs> Toronaga. She says, she says like Toronaga. That's oh. the impression. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, Luca Our repeats everything, but he hasn't, weirdly, he has not repeated curse words. I don't know why. That's the one blocker, but like everything else, he's like, oh, like dad, dad, gonna take out garbage. And he'll repeat that. He doesn't say dad is going to fucking do this. Like, he doesn't do that <laughs> part for some reason. Yeah. It, I, I've done a pretty good job of uh, censoring my, my tongue around her. Uh, she pronounces Fox. Uh, she sees, you know, the Fox in her book exactly <laughs> yeah. like Fox. She just Fox. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. What are what are you most proud of so far in terms of like what what's filled you with the most with joy watching that experience? I mean, it is just how verbal she is. Like she she is uh like when we took her to one of the classes, like you know, there's a bunch of like 14 to 16 month olds, and she's the only one that when they go around like says her name and like in the wow. group they say, and like, what's your name? And so like when she does like April, like in front of everyone, like I just fucking melt. Uh, like half, it's just adorable and half like a sense of pride that she's a uh, ahead of the curve that way. It's, it's funny when they do everything in the third person, like for Luca, everything is like, Luca does blah, blah, blah. And it's like, <laughs> like he's fucking Ricky Henderson and <laughs> he in the nineties. What, but, what but is it's your very cute though. Like those, the verbal things I agree, especially for, you know, people like us where it's like, you make your living communicating, like for them to start communicating and also having little personalities and jokes. Like I think that's kind of the joy. Yeah. Yeah, the other day she said Deontay Johnson is dust, and I was just I was so proud. <laughs> she was probably like, Deontay Johnson really rebounded last year. <laughs> Great trade. Bryce Young, big help. <laughs> <laughs> Great trade, big help. Now you're acting like she's like English as a second language speaker. <laughs> it's toddlers aren't that far off. Yeah, I know. Great trade, big help. Do big things for a team. <laughs> Uh, we have a two six six two going into this round. We have some optionality here. You know, we don't need another QB, but we got Bryce Young right Start, there. Do, potentially. Shut up. Uh, go through the tabs. Oh, okay. You're okay. running back, wide yep. receiver, tight end. This is this is a disaster. Who do you think is the best pick for this team right now? Bryce Young. <laughs> <laughs> I picked Javon Baker. Uh, okay. Do I have enough time? Wait, no. Baker is a wide receiver. Uh, you. Can, oh my God, no. We're gonna take Bryce Young. I win this round. <laughs> okay, I just want everyone to know there were two players at the top of the queue: Bryce Young and Javon Baker. And Spags pretended like he couldn't find Javon Baker, as if I named a guy who was fifty picks down. I thought he was further down. <laughs> I didn't realize he was on this point of the board. It is a drunk stream, Pete. Sometimes your visibility. <laughs> <laughs> limited go to, the have a... go to the bathroom jesus no no i won't because no because if i miss the pick then we can't make a pick that's the downside <laughs> i wish i could control the entire board if i would i could 
Uh, I'll give the team a read here. Let's recenter us. We have a three six six two now, so we got to make it up at wide receiver, perhaps. Uh, Joe Burrow yeah, because someone came. wanted to take Bryce Young to stack with his pick. That's the problem with the Deontay Johnson. It's a compounding mistake pick. But we also had Chuba, so we have a like a good bet on Carolina where you might as well throw the QB in. He could beat Joe Burrow. He can maybe beat Jaden. Uh, running back though, Devon A. Chan, Brian Robinson Jr., Gus Edwards, Chuba Hubbard, Rico Daddle, Keaton Mitchell. Maybe got a little thin in the. The back half there. Wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper, Deontay Johnson, Adonai Mitchell, Ricky Pearsall. Very disciplined at receiver with our picks. We got five in the top 100, have dialed it back. Tight end, Sam Laporta, Kate Otten. I, here's what I'll say. I think we manage draft capital well. I think wide receiver still feels like we could use some help. Here's the thing. We, we now are in full agreement in... God, I hope this is true. Uh, we are done with quarterback. So filter mm -hmm. off a quarterback on the on the board when I look over there to see what our options are. Okay. We're on the board here. Here's here's QBs. I just said <laughs> I don't need to see QBs. Here's running backs. Well, ain't that a sight for sore eyes? <laughs> here's wide receivers. Uh-huh. And here's tight ends. Okay. Um hang on. Can you can you do running back, wide receiver, tight end, and scroll down? Okay. Can you go to just tight end? Like, I, I can't tell if this guy's still on the board, and I don't know how to do it in a clever way. Will you scroll down? All right. So Mike Gesicki's gone, right? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. Yeah, yeah, he's gone. He's okay. Gone. All right. Then I can quit this charade. Um, God damn it. Uh, all right. I'm writing down a name. Who do you think's the best player on this team? Tank Bigsby. Ah, I wrote Tucker Craft. Take who the fuck, who you ever you want. All right. We, we need a running back more. I'm taking Tank here. I, there's been enough signal for Tank of, you know, they want to give somebody work who's not ATN. I don't know if it's going to be Bigsby. He was awful last year in a way that was hilarious, but he's maybe won't be less awful in year two to be the hope. All right. Just filter this. Yeah, what do you, what do you want to see? Receiver. What do you want to see? Wide receiver, wide tight receiver. End? Let's just quit the charade. We can do Tucker Craft. I'm happy to do Tucker Craft next round if you want. If you I want to make that on. play. I've moved on. I actually got, I have a name. I'm writing down the name right now. And I want, I'm writing it down with such conviction that I want you by the time we pick next <laughs> to have arrived at who the best pick is for this team. And I want you to do some deep introspection. I want you to look at this team. I want you to figure out what have we already done on this team? What do we need positionally? What ties the room together? See, I feel like you're leading me now, and I don't know where you're no, leading No, because if I was leading you, you would know who I was talking about. I speak in riddles. I'm like Toranaga. I'm cryptic. <laughs> I, you're my falcon, and I want you to be my peregrine. Oh, boy. All right. I don't, I don't know where you want to lead us. I, I see interesting picks. Well, I mean, it depends what's there. I want you to think critically. Talk through our team. All right. So our team, we're, we're, we're good at QB. With We got everybody stacked up theoretically here to some amount. So I feel like we're okay at QB. Running back, I could add Nath. <laughs> the running back room is not great. HN's got to carry a lot of water for the team and Brian Robinson, I suppose. Wide receiver, we definitely need more wide receiver. That's, that's not... No disagreement there. I mean, I see a wide receiver that might be interesting, perhaps. You're no, not going to. Well, okay. Maybe maybe you will. I've had this written down forever. Okay. I, I think I I think I think know who would make sense for this team. I, I hope you agree. That's 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 the hope. Let's see. We got Razid, who's a regular. We got Rackham yeah. Willie, who I don't know. Um, yeah, SM7817, I don't know. Because I've already written it down, I, I want you to hypothesize. Talk out who you think you're getting. Do we want to spoil it, though, for these two guys who might hear? I don't care. Uh, it's Trey Palmer because we have a bet on Tampa Bay. So we're getting the ancillary Tampa Bay bullshit. See, this is why, Specs, I agree with the concept of stacking. Maybe <laughs> try thinking about it through the lens of one of our fucking quarterbacks. Who do you want? Spags. I want Andre Yoshiba. Yoshivas? Really? Yoshi? Come on. Yes. All right. I, I, but, but like T. Wait, Higgins Yoshibas is, there. We is took... the Cincinnati version of Trey Palmer. And we no, but we, were, we took T. Higgins. T. Higgins is the blocker for Yoshivas. No, he's not. 
He Yoshivas yeah. maybe gets some slot work. They're probably get a slot guy in the draft. Yoshivas is not of a pure outside wide receiver like T. Higgins. I mean, Yoshivas is a pure wide. He, that's what he was last year. He wasn't a slot guy last year. I mean, Boyd blocked everybody. I'll, I'll admit that. But I think they're going to bring in somebody else. And I think if anybody wins a slot, it's Charlie Jones. Charlie Jones is like a pure slot guy. Trey Palmer plays outside and he's blocked by Mike Evans. Come on. And he did, but he ran the slot last year, so we at least saw him do it. I, I thought we were just making you're, a correlation with that, the, but we are making a different correlation. The, that, so okay. Your correlation, you're two in the sauce on uh, PFF alignment data. <laughs> just correlate and enjoy the profits later. All right, well, we disagreed, so I'm drinking now. I did not drink for that one. Oh, I'm I'm drinking for a lot of reasons. Here we go. Charlie's saying, I've missed this. You know what, guys? Let's give some plugs. Hey, number one, another draft coming up on Peach Channel in a moment. We're just going to kibitz on there, I guess is what I'm going to say. And also here on Splash Play, subscribe, hit the like button here. Splash Play now on that March to 4K subs. Of course, we hit 3K on here, 15K on Peach Channel. What are, you're at 16, 17 now? Where are you at? Um... I don't know. You, I've moved. You don't on know the, the vanity metrics unit. offhand. You're not jerking off to your subscriber count. No, the the <laughs> the one I refresh regularly is the Deposit Kingdom. That's the one I'm I'm trying to run up. Um, really? I'm uh, at sixteen point eight on. Uh, on okay, one. so yeah, you're you're cruising twenty k uh, on insight this year. Go to wide receiver. Okay. Who do you like? Scroll down. You're fucking in the bag for Khalif Raymond. I would take. Johnny Wilson. Uh, all right. I wrote down Luke McCaffrey. Luke McCaffrey. All right. I'll give you Luke McCaffrey here. I don't have yeah. a lot of Luke McCaffrey shares. Uh, final team here at 3782. Uh, we have Joe Burrow, Jaden Daniels, Bryce Young at QB, running back Devon Achan, Brian Robinson Jr., Gus Edwards, Shuba Hubbard, Rico Daddle, Keaton Mitchell, Tank Bigsby, wide receiver Amon Ross St. Brown, T. Higgins, Amari Cooper, Deontay Johnson, A.D. Mitchell, Ricky Pearsall, Yoshivas, and, and Luke McCaffrey. Tight end, Sam LaForta, Kate Otten. Where do we go wrong, Pete, besides Luke McCaffrey? I mean, Luke McCaffrey, what kind of odds will you give me on Luke McCaffrey outscoring Deontay Johnson this year? Will you give me 100 to 1? God, I would, but I don't want to take the bet. <laughs> <laughs> what will you give me? I 2 to 1 is what I'd give you. 2 to 1? <laughs> that means if you're giving me 2 to 1. I don't want on minus a, money. On death, a 20th round pick. betting app. It's all plus money shit you're trying to hit. Come on. This I'm not thinking minus money on that. Give me, give me 50 to 1. 50 no! to 1 is zero. I don't want to bet you 51. I give you 51. Luke McCaffrey might bucks. not even play a snap this year. <laughs> I don't like Luke McCaffrey's going to luck box all the bullshit like Christian has. I don't need that. Hey, what are the plugs here? It's Splash. What do we. <laughs> But the plugs the plug. are Spags is so worried about Deontay Johnson that he won't give me 50 to 1 on Luke McCaffrey. No, I don't want because I don't want to pay you for betting 50 bucks. I'm gonna pay you 2500 or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, but Spags, I will what do I want? 50 to 1? Yeah, that sounds great. Let's I'll give you no, $50. That's an, awful, that's an awful deal for me. I want a good dude. That's I'm a free fucking $50. A <laughs> I don't have it's enough to pay for Luke McCaffrey bets. Come on. I'm not a book. I would I love this bet. Everyone tells Spags he's an idiot to not take this free $50. No, I don't want your free $50. I don't want to, Yeah, it's not a probably bet. The probably score would be <laughs> negative on this one. <laughs> I mean, this is free money. You could just okay. throw this in a VTI. Deontay Johnson get... tears his hamstring in July, and Luke no, McCaffrey well, has one pass. <laughs> not, but we could have an injury clause. Get out of here. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, what did you, what did you ask yeah, me? So where are we going next, Pete, after I pee? Yeah, we're doing a... Uh, uh best ball after dark on my channel if you're a youtube member any level normally it's best ball value hounds i set it to any level because i forgot to set it in the first place um spags and i are gonna catch up and if, if i know spags well he will uh be open and honest in a way that he probably even shouldn't be so that would be my selling point pete knows me too well pete i appreciate you so much for what you've done for me and my journey here as well as splash play glad to be doing another stream with you coming up in an hour or so Follow Pete here. It's in the pinned comments description as well. Hit the join button for Pete's channel. Get on board there. And any final words here, Pete, the splash of people that we roped them into you and now they're stuck with me. They are. I uh, know. I appreciate everyone watching. Thank you uh, to all of you guys, specifically the squirt squad uh, for everything you guys do for spags and the deposit kingdom. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next channel. See you in a few minutes. Bye. Peace.